hey, last week was Amazon Prime Day. Did you guys have a good Prime Day? Yeah. Ah, yeah. As a kid, nothing was more exciting than Amazon Prime Eve. <laughs> We'd decorate the Bezos bush and stay up all night, eagerly awaiting the drones coming down the chimney, <laughs> bringing books and laundry detergent and VCRs, all the while mining our personal data. Oh, those were the days. Well, if you celebrated Prime Day, you probably scored some great deals, but you also probably f***ed over a lot of people. It's described as a cutthroat corporate jungle where workers are pitted against one another. 80-hour work weeks are the norm, and falling ill can mean you're out of a job. How bad is it? Well, for one, Amazon warehouse workers pee in bottles because they can't take toilet breaks. Meanwhile, CEO Jeff Bezos is worth about $150 billion. Think what, what he could do with that money for his employees. They could be peeing in gold goblets. <laughs> yeah, see, I don't like that. You'd think they'd put that in the corner, right? <laughs> and that guy's either taking too many or not enough vitamins. <laughs> Last year, Amazon paid no income tax. But the employees see no benefits at all. The Times recounts several alarming anecdotes from former employees. From one who said, nearly every person I work with, I saw cry at their desk, men included. To a woman who miscarried twins but went on a business trip the next day. Her boss, she says, told her, I'm sorry, the work is still going to need to get done. Wow. Yeah, they pressured a woman to work the day after she had a miscarriage. And I thought Amazon was supposed to be good with deliveries. <laughs> Amazon also has been accused of profiting off racism. Recently, they were busted for selling fun stuff like this lynching decal for your truck. Because, let's be honest, it'll be on a truck. <laughs> and not one, but two different Chinese boy costumes. Now, OK, first of all, you don't know what they're doing underneath the blurred head. <laughs> Maybe they're putting in two contacts simultaneously. <laughs> Anyway, shame on you for selling these, Amazon, and shame on the Chinese boy who sewed them. <laughs> now, Amazon employees in Europe have gone on strike and called for a boycott, and they're wondering if the United States will join the cause. And I say yes! <laughs> this makes me never want to shop at Amazon again! Except for, you know, socks, you know. Where, where else am I going to get socks? I've always bought me socks at Amazon. If you could tell me another way to get socks, I'd like to hear it. Like, me grandmother's dead. She both made and purchased socks for me. Of course we won't boycott Amazon. The only thing we hate more than injustice is inconvenience. We already know that plenty of giant companies profit from human suffering. Apple had used child labour, Facebook is brimming with hate speech, and Uber has a huge problem with sexual harassment in the workplace, which is particularly unsettling since the workplace is typically a Toyota Prius and the HR department is a hula girl bobblehead who turns a blind eye to assault. <laughs> These companies are now part of our daily lives. We won't stop using them. Besides, how will everyone know I march against sexual harassment if I can't take an Uber to the protest and I can't take Instagram pictures with my iPhone? I need to violate human rights in order to advocate for human rights. <laughs> for many people, boycott boycotts aren't even a realistic option. You might live in a town where Walmart is the only place to shop or... Uh, McDonald's is the most affordable restaurant, or the only shoe store is run by a serial killer. <laughs> what are you going to do? Go barefoot? <laughs> but here's my solution. Shame offsets. If you buy something from a company we know is bad, you have to do something extra good to balance it out. For instance, I hate homophobia, but I love Chick-fil-A. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, but I do. I just love Chick-fil-A. Uh, look, when gay people can make a comparable sandwich, I'll be the first in line. But it, it doesn't even have to be as good. Just get close. But they, they don't seem to be putting any effort in. The gays know f all about chicken. <laughs> I don't know what it is about homophobia that makes people so good at seasoning poultry, but... <laughs> they've cracked it. <laughs> but what if... Whenever I order Chick-fil-A, I also donate to an organisation that supports gay rights. It, it balances out. Plus, any time I eat there, 
I bake my gay neighbours a wedding cake to make up for it. <laughs> you can obviously see that I eat a lot of Chick-fil-A. <laughs> or maybe you hate that Hobby Lobby's healthcare won't cover many forms of contraception on religious grounds. But you also really, really love crafts. Well, <laughs> when you shop there, make a donation to Planned Parenthood. Then when you buy glitter and postboard, you know you've probably paid for at least one abortion. <laughs> Think of it like a morality diet, right? You try to balance the good with the bad, right? You fill your tank up at BP, donate to wildlife conservation. You take an Uber, donate to victims of sexual assault. You <laughs> shop at Urban Outfitters, tie yourself in a sack and throw yourself in the ocean. <laughs> this way, you can still live a convenient life and in the end, it all balances out.